G'day everyone, I'm Wayne Dowson from Wayne Dowson Fine Art. Recently, Jackie and I were invited to Delegate to interview Sandra Taylor O'Hagan's 97-year-old father, Curly, for our Anzac Portrait series. We also held an exhibition of some of my Anzac portraits, and it was during this exhibition that we unveiled a very special portrait of Sandra's granduncle Jack. Sandra also wrote a wonderful and moving poem about her granduncle Jack, which she'll read for you all now. In my grandmother's house on a front room wall were several photos that I recall. My granddad, his granddad, his father and mother, and also one of his younger brother. His name was John Squire, but he was always called Jack. I can see him so clearly as I look back. On the front cover of the Town and Country Journal, he looked so like my granddad. You could see they were fraternal. Since childhood, I looked at those photos in awe, and I knew my granduncle had been to a war. But I didn't wonder until I got much older about the life of my granduncle, the Australian soldier. Now I have his war records, and reading them through, I've learned a lot about this man, who I never knew. Five foot nine and a half, blue eyes, brown hair, 149 pounds, complexion fair. Born the 16th of September, 1893, the second youngest of eight in his family. Six years of age, when his mum was put in the ground, and when Jack was 13, his father drowned. He enlisted in March 1916, and I have so many questions of what his life might have been. He was a labourer, a blacksmith before he joined the strife. I wonder if he was ever in love. Did he plan to take a wife? So much I don't know about this wonderful young man, what he felt, what he thought. Did he have a plan? Was he happy or sad? Was he gentle or tough? I'll never know the answers, but I think his life was rough. He was killed just four days after he turned 24 in Polygonwood, Belgium, during the First World War. The Great Battle of Menon Road, which the Aussies eventually won, felled by a single machine gun bullet, fired by the Hun. He was within the German lines, a machine gunner his army trade, killed outright by one bullet. On top of a shell hole, his body laid. Between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m., the 20th of September, 1917, in front of a German pillbox, his beautiful life ceased to have been. He and his fellow machine gunner were then buried on the spot near Glencourse Wood. They were laid to rest in the place where they were shot. At least his death was not in vain, and it means so much to me that six days later, the Aussie 5th Divi won a great victory. Family couldn't go to his funeral, nor ever cry at his grave, but they would always remember that he was extremely brave. I'm sure his family felt comfort, even though they were distraught, to read, very fine chap, well liked, the last words on his report. Last Anzac Day, for the very first time, it was my granduncle Jack who filled my mind. I thought of his sacrifice and of his lost years, and in memory of him, I shed lots of tears. Though it's more than 90 years later, which is a very long while, I'm glad I've come to know him after reading his army file. I feel he is looking down from heaven, and I surely hope and pray he knows that someone loves him and thinks of him every day.